Welcome to this video that's going to discuss subdocuments. Subdocuments is very rarely used in day-to-day -day usage of Word. This video is really targeted for audiences which are going to do larger documentation. Um, as I'm in IT, um, one of the most dreaded watchwords that developers and, and consultants always hate is the D word, documentation. And generally documentation can span a lot of pages. Um, in the example I'm going to provide today, okay, we've only got 33 pages, which for me is quite, quite small. Um, but at work, I have documents which are 600 pages in length, guaranteed that no one will ever read them. However, they do need to be accurate. Um, so what we're going to do in this scenario is we're going to sort of simulate what I've done at work, which is able to continue to use a document when you start getting to ridiculous pages. Now, subdocumentation gives you two options. It gives you the option to share the load in regards providing documentation or sections of your document for different people to work on. So as you can see in the document I've got in front of me, I've, I've just typed in Fred, Barney and Betty. Um, those particular people are going to work on those sections of the document. Now you could be saying, hang on a minute John, if you're in the document they can't be in the document at the same time. You're absolutely right. So that's one of the reasons why we need to create subdocuments. This allows you to split the document into separate files and those separate files are known as subdocuments. The document that binds them all together, i.e. puts all the subdocuments into one place, that is known as the master document. So what we're going to do in this video is show you how to do that and it's relatively straightforward. So uh, where do we go? Well first of all I would recommend you go to the website pcteach.me to get this document which I've got in front of us so you can um, play with the exact same one I'm doing on this video. Um, the second thing then is selecting the particular sections and creating subdocuments. Now by default you're probably, when you open up the document from my, uh, my website, you're probably in this situation, you're just on say the the home page, uh, sorry, the home page, the first page. Now, from this first page, we can scroll down and we can see that we've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of text. And eventually I should come across another heading, but there's lots of them. There we go, specific, which is the second one. So that's what, page 11, almost page 12. And then we can keep going until we get to the, the next um, heading style. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to then create sub documents and this is exclusively done inside the outline view so down to the bottom you should see the icon with the um, individual indents and lines on it which is known as outline you click onto that and we are now in the um, outline screen now what we're going to do then is create a sub document this is done by expanding one of the sections so that includes the heading title and the text you want underneath it and then we go up to this toolbar and regardless of version of Word, you should see an icon like this. And when you hover over it, it should say Show Document. And what this does is it then just brings up an extra section to the toolbar with really only two options on it, which is Create and Insert. So have a guess which one we need. We need Create. So click on to Create. And what you should now see is you've got a box all the way around Introduction. So if I just collapse that, there we go. And I'll just expand this section and I'll just do Create again and collapse again and one more time on summary and create and collapse again right you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out something's changed what you should find now is you've got the same text and the plus as before but we've now got a box going around the side and also a little table icon which indicates now that the text and the heading are no longer located in this document they're located in a sub document now before we can carry on um, I just want to introduce you over to the right hand side here. This is not a bolt on of Word, this is just Windows Explorer. And as you can see, all I've got is the report.doc file um, available, which is also at the top here. I'd like you to pay special notice to the actual size of the file, which is 135K. What's going to happen in a moment is report.doc is going to get very, very small indeed. Now, to finish off the section, to, to complete our master document, what we do is we click onto the save icon. And what should happen now is over on the right hand side in Windows Explorer, just refresh it to catch up. Can you see now that the report.doc is only 22K in size and the others, as you can see, are all bang on the same 62K. That's because they've pretty much got exactly the same number of paragraphs of text inside there. 
Now, what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to close down report doc. And I'm now going to go back into it. Sounds daft, but it's for a purpose. Because when you go back into it, rather than seeing the individual paragraphs of text, you now only see the headings in regards to hyperlink. Now, this is sort of my first point about sub documents of the two. This means now that the file is very small and very manageable, however, not very pretty. But the idea is now that if I only want to work on a specific section of the document, let's say the introduction, all I do is I go and hover over it, control click as it says, and hey presto, what you should find is you've now got a separate document open and you can work inside it. So I'm just going to say um, training from PC teach dot me and save that. And I'll just close that down again. So anything happened? Well, yeah, introduction, the file size is slightly changed. It's actually compressed it a little bit. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just click on this button here, which is expand sub documents. And as a result, you should now see that it's brought the text back in. And as you can see, the text is there. Now, if I wanted to add to it, sure, I can. No problem. But remember, when you save, you're not going to save inside the report doc file now. You'll actually be saving into the introduction doc instead. So let me just um, click on to save there. So two things we've learned about outline view. The first one is we use the outline view to split the load of information, which gives you the advantage really of better performance. The second advantage is because you've splitted the load, you can then distribute these sections of the document for other people to work on rather than yourself. So finally, to finish this video off, we've just got the last section to deal with, which is, let's say the report's now done and we now need to bring it all back into a master document. In some cases, this wouldn't be the case. For example, my technical document, I would keep in this format because at the end of the day, when you go to page layout view, you will be unaware that this is anything but what, what you'd think it'd be. It would just be a document. But if you want to secure it and stop people from editing in the future, you can lock the document, which is done with these um, padlocks here. However, this is just a simple file locking mechanism which can be easily overridden. What we want to do is just actually put it all back into the same document. So in the same way as how you created the document, all we do now is we click on the plus here and then we choose unlink. Now, once I've done this to each of the sections, I just want to talk about one final thing before we wrap up this video and have a look over here. Again, the report doc is 22K in size, um, but when I click on to save, what will happen now is it will pull all that information in into the master document again. So you're now back to one document. And as you can see now over on the right hand side, we're now at 135k. Now you may notice that the other documents remain. Now this you may consider a bad thing or a good thing. I think it's a good thing because at least you've got a backup of the text. So as long as you don't do any more changes to the text and something goes wrong with this, like you accidentally delete it, you can then just insert the document again. And that can be done either via doing insert sub document and then this will give you a file open section and we can bring it in that way. Or alternatively, you can just copy and paste the text in if you wanted to. So there we go. Outlining views. Outlining is very, very powerful, especially when you come to deal with large documentation. It allows you to adjust all of your heading styles so you can indent them, outdent them, as the previous video discussed. But also on top of that, it lets you deal with sub documentation. Not everybody's cup of tea, however, a very worthy addition to Microsoft Word. I do hope this has helped you. And I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. Thanks.